this is a bit of a tutorial of how I do a chipped paint effect to make a blaster look really old and bashed up. It's going to be a long video, so I'll just summarize at the beginning here. What you want to do is do any base that you normally do, like vinyl dye in my case, then paint over with a metallic color. I like yeah, aluminium. Then over that, you put little dabs of liquid latex and let that set. Then paint your overcoat over that. Then peel away the latex and that'll peel that overcoat with it, revealing the metallic color underneath. Then you want to cover over all of that with some matte clear coat to seal it in and complete the effect. Right, so let's get into the details of it. So you can see here it's all prepared to go and I'm just getting the latex out. You want to use some scrubbing pad because that's going to have a very sort of rough effect. So I'm just preparing a little bit and then I'll dip that in the liquid latex and proceed to use it like a brush. The latex sets quite fast so you can work very swiftly. I got this idea from a Humbrol product for masking and I'll link in the tutorial there that I followed because it's a very good tutorial. They've got like a specific masking latex, but uh, just any liquid latex will do. So I'm thinking about four main things when I'm applying the latex. First one is any corner. So that's where three faces meet. Because they're the bits that are going to get worn first through a usage of any sort of object like this. Then after the corners are done, I'll look at any prominent edges, that's where two faces meet, and I'll put a bit along those. And then after that, the third thing I'm looking for is any large sort of exposed face that might get scratches or dents. And you'll see me put a few dabs there. That's also a really good way to cover up my messy bodywork. Like for example, by the power switch here, I nicked a little bit deep when I was taking off the Nerf logo. So I just turned that into a desirable sort of part of it as if, as if the gun's been chipped there. And then the fourth thing I look at is anywhere that someone's fingers might wear the paint away or fingernails might scratch. When that latex sets, it goes clear, so it can be a bit hard to see where you've already applied some. You just got to look closely. So up along the tack rail there, you probably get a fair bit of wear and tear. I've, I've loosely assembled the gun before doing this because it's easier to see all the proud areas. Because there are some parts that are kind of protected and, and you wouldn't see any wear and tear there. If you did this on the disassembled pieces, then you might accidentally mask an area that wouldn't really actually see any wear when the gun is assembled. I got quite carried away with this. It could be done much more subtly. Yeah, it just did a big scratch, like it had uh, been put down on a rough surface, scraped along a table or something. I put a heavy amount around the front there, because I, I imagine that would get worn a lot when it's holstered, you know, shoving it into a holster. So here we are with uh, sections latexed off and then black paint over the top. I recommend using a matte paint rather than gloss because it can be fairly hard to see where the latex is without getting the light reflecting right. So the main tools that I'm going to use are these very sharp uh, electronics tweezers, but that runs a high risk of scratching right through down to the plastic, so I've also got these 
plastic tweezers, which are a bit safer, but not quite as sharp. But honestly, most of the time I actually just use my fingernails and my fingers just to rub it off. So the idea is just to start off by scratching along the top, just to break up the black paint on top of the latex, but careful not to scrape right through the latex. That just loosens it, and then from there you can carefully peel away once you've got that surface broken. So you want to avoid really tiny bits of latex. You can see I was having a bit of trouble getting the very small dots off. So you want to make your blobs fairly sizable. So I've broken the surface and now it's just a matter of peeling off the latex. Another downside of using gloss paint like this is that it has quite a tendency to stick down after you've peeled it. You get a lot of flakes that you need to brush off. So I've got this brush with stiff bristles and that's really good for brushing away the flakes of black paint that have stuck back down. Just tidies up the edges so any slightly lifted bit of paint gets taken away. The end of the paintbrush handle can also be effective at breaking the surface of the paint. So that's the idea there. I made an absolute mess of it when I went to put the clear coat over the top because I used one that actually made it look really frosted. I thought it was just going to look matte, so it could have turned out a little bit better. I came back much later to do a bit that I had initially missed, the uh, flap for the darts at the top of the mag, and I found out that my latex had actually uh, all gone hard, so I couldn't use it. So I made do with some masking tape, just tearing little bits and then masking that way and I actually had some success with that. The edges are a bit fuzzier, but it still more or less gets the same effect.
So you can bear that in mind if you can't get latex easily. Now with this other gun, I did a much more advanced version of this technique. What I did here is I did the base black, then the aluminium colour over it, but then I splattered on some brown. The can was just about run out, which made it really easy to make it splatter in like droplets rather than a nice even spray. And I just did that lightly over. Then I did the latex, then black paint, then I did more latex. I went over the same patches, but just slightly larger. Then I put some nice metallic blue over that. And the effect I got when I peeled the latex off is that it looks like the metallic blue has been chipped away and then the black underneath it has been chipped away, but not quite as much. So that looks quite a bit more realistic. And if you look at the carousel that this is spinning on, you'll see that that's actually steel with black paint over it, and then it's had 30 years of wear and tear where the black paint has been chipped away and has revealed the steel, which is then rusted and it actually looks really similar to what I've done. So I think my result is quite realistic on that one. And then the overall effect is just made much better by the fact that I uh, put silver on all those screw heads and a bit of black detailing as well on there. And I even went to the lengths of uh, getting some brown to shove in all the creases, some sort of powder paint. So it looks like dirt build up, just add to the realism. So I hope to see other people take this idea and see what they can do with their Nerf guns.